Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna take it easy. We're gonna chill. We're gonna look at some orchids that we didn't see in a while, make some greenhouse updates or orchid updates and just enjoy our time. I have to say that finally, finally, temperatures went a little bit lower and I'm so happy because I could not handle the summer anymore. I am so ready for autumn. You would not believe it. I'm also looking forward because it is the season for many, many orchids to bloom. And I have a suspicion we're gonna see a lot of kitties soon. So anyway, that's besides the point. I don't know why I started with this, but hey, I did. So don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it. And why not subscribe? It is totally, yes, honey, it's very, it's totally free. And I post very regularly, three times a week on this channel. So with that said, let's start with the Phragmipediums. All right, so look at that, you guys. My Phragmipediums are looking amazing, finally. Oh my goodness. And yes, I found the magic setup, magic quote unquote, for me in this climate. It is self-watering. I'm using some Lechuza pots. I actually filmed the repotting of these guys because I'm also trying a new medium and this is Coco Choir combined with bark and perlite. And I have to say, you guys, it is working so, so well for me. It is maintaining these guys happy and hydrated, which was my number one struggle in this environment. Even for me, it is hard sometimes to figure out what some orchids will do better in. As you might know already, it's not enough to just read an article or do what somebody says it works for them. Because the truth is, not all our environments are the same. And definitely media such as semi-hydroponics, with Leca or other stuff or bark and sphagnum moss, these things haven't worked out great for me. They just don't deliver as much humidity around the root area as I need. But this medium does, and this medium is a lot finer than all of these methods most people use. Combined with a self-watering pot, which has no ventilation whatsoever, it should be disaster, right? But it's not. And this is just due to the environment. So finally, I have a glimmer of hope in the future that I can grow some beautiful Phragmipediums as well, because they became a sort of zygopetalums for me, which we're gonna see today as well, don't you worry. So I was a little bit stressed by them, but now they're all looking fine. Bonus, I mentioned in one of my videos that I did receive a Phragmipedium for free. I actually first purchased it, but then the seller, which is Orchid Man, my favorite seller at the moment on eBay, he looked at it and said, ooh, it really doesn't look so good. The roots are not looking the best. The poor guy is dehydrated. I'm just gonna ship this guy for free and refund you the money because I don't trust it's gonna survive. And I'm not gonna say no to a challenging orchid. And look at him today. Well, I don't know if I should expect roots to come out of the bottom, but there's no roots out of the bottom, but the orchid clearly is a lot more hydrated. There is a new leaf growing from the center and everything is looking much, much better. And this is a Bessé, which is one of the more finicky Phragmipediums apparently. Also down below, we have the Ainsworthy, which is an older Phragmipedium that was very, very upset with me. Did not look great at all. I'm actually trying a combination of soil with sphagnum moss and perlite in here and it's actually working pretty pretty great i do have to water it more often than those guys but for the moment it is working so even soil if it's not heavy and if it's aerated can work with phragmipediums which are not necessarily epiphytes it really depends on the species i can see that this guy is dry so i do let them dry out to some extent before i water them since the reservoir can keep a lot of water and I typically water them every two weeks or so in the summertime, which is a lot. In the winter, obviously, I will adjust this. I will not fill up the reservoir. I'll just make sure that the medium is moist and pretty much that's it. And I have to say, I think I got it. We'll see how the winter goes, but I'm very, very happy with the result. The only Phragmipedium which I'm not happy with is the popoe oh how the turns have tabled and yes i'm aware that the saying says how the tables have turned but it's funnier the other way around this guy was the only phragmipedium that was doing well for me not anymore it's the only one that is still in bark and sphagnum moss and look at him yeah this kind of happened when i over fertilized him 
And yes, I do admit that I'm not always on top of watch ring, but he's declining more and more. Look at this, what even is this? I looked for pests, there's no pest that I can see. Maybe it's some sort of sun damage. I do keep him in a southern window, but it's very, very filtered. I don't even know what it is. What I wanna do is move him to a self-watering pot with the Coco Choir Medium and see how we go from there. But I think I do wanna order another Lechuza pot like the Deltini ones, maybe a white one, because they just look better and those pots are really, really durable in time. I'm pretty happy with them. And they help me a lot because they have the gauge so I know when my orchid kinda needs watering. But yeah, that's the story with the Phragmipediums. Who would've thought? Who would've thought indeed? Next up, we have two orchids, which are actually the very same one, but one of them is the variegated variety. So this is the Oncidium Catrin Zoke, which is one of my favorites Oncidiums, I have to say, for its ease of growth. About a million years ago, I did make a spotlight video <laughs> on the Catrin Zoke. I think it was at six years ago at this point. And I was saying that this guy can produce so, so many flower spikes. Now, well, let me just show you what my Catrin Zoke produced this year, not the variegated one. We'll get to that. So here is the normal variety, the green variety, that is just maturing a pseudobulb and is putting out one, two, I need to tilt him, three, four, and five flower spikes out of one pseudobulb. I don't think there is another Oncidium type, be it hybrid or species, that can put on so many flower spikes. Maybe the Oncidium Sherry Baby, two, three, but five, I don't know. If you guys know another one, let me know. But this is the Catrin Zoke and it's massive, wonderful, wonderful vigorousness. This is the epitome of hybrid vigor. Now, the variegated version. On the other hand, not so vigorous, at least this particular one, not so vigorous for me, does not produce as many flower spikes. Last time it bloomed, I think it had two flower spikes per pseudobulb. Roots look okay-ish. They're decent, but they're certainly not as vigorous as the other variety. Now, can it be that this particular individual has an issue? It might be, absolutely. But the variegation plays a role as well. The leaf simply doesn't have as much chlorophyll as the other variety. How that affects the entire plant, to be fully honest, I'm not entirely sure. Based on the two plants that I have, I can clearly see a difference, but obviously two plants are not enough. So I'm really curious to know, do you guys have the variegated variety? Is it as vigorous as this one or is it just something with my individual? I have to say I love the variegated variety. I love everything variegated, particularly with very light colored variegation. And it does make sense that something like this is not as vigorous, but the difference is so, so astonishing. So I'm really curious what your experience is. If you have this variety, let us know in a comment down below. So far, if you're looking for a Toughest Nails Oncidium hybrid that overblooms itself pretty much, look for the Catrin Zoke, not the variegated variety. One thing though that I will warn you about, the Pseudobulb, even the new one, no matter how many roots you will have, it will get slightly, slightly shriveled while it's in bloom. It's gonna snap over it when the blooms are faded, but while it's in bloom and it has multiple flower spikes, it will shrivel a little bit because the plant is overdoing it. It's kind of a glitch, if you will. The normal species would never do something like this. It's risky. In nature, most probably something like this could not be sustained because you cannot really schedule rain. Well, in cultivation, you can. So this type of overblooming is a stress on the plant, but if you take care of it and you don't stress the plant, it can definitely handle it. Just don't worry if you see the pseudobulb shriveling, even if you have a ton of roots. Next up, here we have one of the best looking Alisaras that I have laid my eyes upon. We're going to look at it a little bit more at the end of the month. When we recap the orchids in bloom, you can see one of the blooms is already fading. But anyway, this is the Alisara Hilo or Hilo Ablaze, Hilo Gold. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is actually not the blooms, which are spectacular. But look what this orchid did. What is even this? <laughs> is it a suitable? Is it a flower spike? It's both. Let me give you a close up. So this orchid is super healthy. It matured two lovely pseudobulbs this year. One of them created a long and really showy flower spike. The other one started to grow what appeared to be 
a new pseudobulb, a new growth, which was a little peculiar, but not unheard of. Also, this growth sprouted right next to the pseudobulb, where typically it's the flower spike place. But I let it be, see what happens, and behold, it actually grew to be a cane-like pseudobulb formation with a flower spike on top. And as it was forming, it was kind of looking like it wanted to be a flower spike, but it also wanted to have some leaves and a pseudobulb, but then it kind of really wanted to have some buds as well. And in the end, this formation occurred, which I will have to agree, looks a little bit like an abomination, but it's funny at the same time. So I've never actually had an Oncidium grow such a formation. This is really not typical for Oncidiums. These guys do have a lot more bulbous pseudobulbs, not canes, but when the genes glitch, which happens a lot, particularly with hybrids, then you can have such anomalies. I actually have quite a few videos named Orchids are doing weird stuff. I don't even remember how I named it. Check them down below. The more orchids you have, the more little anomalies you will observe with them, which are kind of cute, but I I thought this takes the cake. I've never seen anything like this and I'm curious to see if it will ever happen again. I cannot say that I hope it will. I much more prefer flower spikes but there we go since it happened let's film it and enjoy it for what it is. Next up a little update on my tilted pot situation here. This is the Dendrobium pseudo equitans and yeah is still pretty pretty gorgeous and this display is still functioning i still am looking for a tilted decorative pot which i'm sure i will find the perfect size the perfect one at some point but so far so good i just wanted to show you that this orchid is indeed growing like i wanted it to grow there are some structures which formed while it was hanging i was about to say potted and these guys don't look super nicely arranged but the newer growth, which I see are happening here in the back and also here at the base, they are going towards the light and they're doing this pendant, but then growing upwards type of motion, which I really, really like. And I'm really hoping that I will get some blooms because they are very whimsical as well. This is a very, very showy orchid, passes as a house plant totally, maybe when it grows a little bit more, but yeah, all I need to do is find that tilted pot and then it will look a lot, a lot better. Speaking about mounted orchids, this is one I'm sure you don't know that I have because I didn't tell you about it. It was in one of my orders from a couple of months ago. This is a Comparedia Macroplactron. Hmm, I might have that a little bit wrong. You're gonna have a tag on the screen. I had a Comparedia a while back, which suffered a lot on transport, and in the end I couldn't revive it, so I decided to buy another one. You can see it's mounted, and I typically don't keep my orchids mounted since I don't have the time to water them, and it's super super hot here. But this orchid actually arrived with two flower spikes, and I really 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 want to see the flowers. This is one of those orchids that I've wanted for a lot a lot of time, and I don't even know the color. The seller doesn't know the color either it could be pink it could be orange i am not sure it's going to be a surprise so i really didn't want to spoil the flower spikes now typically you know me i don't have an issue repotting even if the orchid is in spike because i know i can make sure to be gentle with the root system most of the times <laughs> uh, but this one is mounted and typically mounted orchids are far more attached to the piece of wood than a potted one would be to the pot so i was a little afraid that i would lose the buds and now i have to water it every single day it's not fun i have to agree but it is what it is the buds are really taking off so soon enough i will be able to pot it but i'm really 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 curious to see it in bloom so i do have a comparedia finally if you guys are old enough on my channel you might remember the comparedia that i had she looked so bad i'm gonna try to find the video to show you i cannot believe the difference this orchid looks so sturdy so nice and healthy the one that I had didn't even have a pseudobulb looking like structure here. It was just a bunch of very tiny leaves. So I'm really, really happy with this one, but I'm curious to see what the color will be. You girls are making too much fun of me. And finally, here are some zygopetalums for you, which are doing so, so great. If you remember, I recently, well, a few months ago, I potted them in soil. It's a combination of soil and perlite. I treat them as terrestrials. And so far, so good. It's been the best experience that I had with these zygopetalums. 
But you might say that I changed something, and yes, I did. <laughs> I changed the pots only for these three, but I will change for the others as well. I'll show you why. It's kind of hard to gauge the watering without having an indicator, and these pots are actually cool and wet when the soil is wet as well. Also, these IKEA pots have a very, very big dish, and sometimes what I do is just put water in this dish, fill the dish, and then the pot absorbs that water and it just so happens it's the optimum amount for me. I sometimes do pour it from the top, but what happens is it's much, much faster and easier for me to put it in the dish. And so far, so good. My zygos are actually very, very happy. Who would have thought? My zygos potted in these glazed pots are pretty happy as well, but these dishes are just not as tall, I cannot use them in the same way, and also these pots don't really offer me an indication. Yes, the top layer might be dry, but I always need to stick my finger because, again, I will sound like a broken record, sorry. But yeah, it's very, very warm. My greenhouse is very ventilated. I have fans running when I don't film. I have my AC. The top layer dries in a day. So visually, I cannot tell when I need to water these plants. I need to always stick my finger. I'm not gonna buy humidity probes for each and every one of them. I don't want to stick my finger all the time and I don't want to be caught off guard without a proper wet soil, which happened quite a few times and these guys did not appreciate it. So yeah, this is okay, but it's not really helping me out. This setup, on the other hand, I think it's pretty, pretty clear to see that the pots are wet. Look at the color of the dish, which is dry. You see, it's a big, big difference. So I can clearly tell when my orchids need water. Yes, this being unglazed terracotta, it does dry out quite fast, but this is where these dishes come in. If I fill the dishes, and if I so desire, I fill them twice in the hottest days, it's going to last me about a week, let's say. Five days to a week, which it's okay, I can work with that. And I have a visual indicator of when I actually need to water my zygos because these guys really, really hate to dry out. I think you can see that these are actually looking a little better than the others because I can simply gauge the water better. Now, IKEA does not have stock, sadly, for these pots, so I'm waiting for them to stock. I was even looking only for the dishes so I can use my other terracotta pots. They don't even have dishes at the moment. So I'm waiting on Ikea before I move everybody, but I cannot wait to move everybody because this is working out pretty great for me. And the soil medium does it for my orchids and for this environment. And yeah, great success with the zygos as well. Well, at least some of them for now. And yes, I could definitely use other types of dishes, but I do like this visual cue between the color of the dish and the pot itself, since it turns out it helps me so, so, so much. So I would just rather wait so that I don't repot my orchids about a million times. And this has been it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below in a comment what other orchids you'd like to see, orchids that maybe I didn't show off in a while, and I'll try to include them in my next update. And with that said, thank you for watching, hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, it's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you all next time, bye!